Hello there, thanks for watching another Edible Acres video. I thought this would be a, a fun first in potentially a series. I think what I'd like to do is ask if people are interested in this, um, write in the comments and let me know if I should do more of these. I want to do um, a bunch of videos around specific polycultures that have been designed here at Edible Acres over the years and, you know, things that work, things that don't work, and maybe just highlight some of these different guilds uh, some of them are intuitive and some are researched and some just kind of evolved over time and just share food for thought. So no real prescription of, oh, you have to do this, but certain patterns and observations that seem to work really well. And so what I'm panning around on here is, a, I think, a really nice polyculture that's been performing beautifully for us over the years. And it's, a, it's an apple guild that has a fair amount of complexity in the herbaceous understory but also some interesting, fun, I think, and potentially resilient additions that um, we we'll start with the apple as the keystone. And let me come to these guys in a moment. You might already know who these are, and you might be wondering already what the heck are they doing so close, but I want to talk about that. So this is a grafted apple a friend gave me a couple years ago, and right smack in the middle of the yard, we popped it in with all the grass around. Now this is a pretty major deer Avenue. You can believe me or not, but there's a huge amount of deer that move through this property. Lots of browse pressure. So this had to be protected. And the way it was done in this case is the apple was co-planted with a bunch of garlic around it way back early on. Now this was about six years ago. The garlic has since faded into the background. It's barely there. You can just see a tiny legacy. Um, but it served its purpose. It protected the young plant a bit from predation and browse. Around it, as a rhizome barrier and also a deer deflector, at the time of planting, the sod was cut out and rhubarb and comfrey were planted around the southern edge of this. Now that's a real common pattern. You've got your long-lived, deep tap-rooted, dynamic accumulator rhizome barrier. And so now this is digging very deep drawing nutrients up that are then deposited on the soil in the fall for the apple and it's helping to block from having grasses and other weeds come into this polyculture. They perform beautifully and rhubarb behaves as a really great deer deflector I've found. Silver bullet, no way, but certainly very helpful. In between the rhubarbs, a couple red currant cuttings were stuck figure why not catch a crop out of this system while we wait for the apple to evolve. They don't get too much deer browse or rabbit pressure. They're relatively easy. And you can see they're making a crop. So this was all plugged in again about five, six years ago. And the apple's looking beautiful. It's growing along. It could use a little more light, but so could almost everything in this project. I don't think anywhere here it would be described as full light by most farmers. Um, but that is what it is. It's hedgerow. Now let's get to the other interesting layer which is to the north of this apple, so that is to this side of the apple, you may be wondering what are these weedy looking things or you might know your plants and say well heck that looks like an American persimmon and a pawpaw seedling. So then the question is definitely begged what the hell are they doing within two feet, three feet, of the base of the trunk of this apple. Don't we care about the apple as our keystone? Well, we do, but hedging your bets is not a bad idea. Nature seems to do an exquisite job of continually hedging bets insofar as packing itself to the brim. Now this, we ha happen to plant a lot of the things that are in there, but nature just keeps packing it in. So why would I break so fully from that model as to say that only an apple should be here? And so the reason these are here is that I don't know what will happen with this apple. Is it going to get girdled? Is it going to get browsed? It's a pretty big target. It's a real standard target for a lot of the herbivores around here to get onto. Pawpaw and persimmon both seem to be pretty darn deer resilient. Now being on the outside, they're creating a little bit of a deflection of deer and rabbits poking in and getting into there. But they're also letting me have the option that if the apple fails, I've got trees in the wings that can climb up and enter into the canopy that the apple would have occupied. Now let's say the apple thrives. Awesome. We've got a deep tap-rooted pawpaw and a pretty deep heart-rooted 
persimmon, not as much root competition for the apple, and they're planted to the north, so they can continue to lean out into these glades, into these openings, and have their own livelihood needs met. And we've got a little three-way thicket of trees that all produce fruit. As long as one of these survives over the next 10 or 20 years, I'll have a pretty decent spacing for an orchard. If all three survive, I probably will have fruit working out of all of them. And I can always prune one, chop and drop one. 20 years from now, the weather changes crazy, and for some reason, Pawpaw just can't do it. Well, I have apple and persimmon. So it's a polyculture with a hedged bet. No pun intended, or I guess one is <laughs> intended. So I would say hedge your bets if you're going to plant some trees and pop in some extra friends. Another much simpler polyculture here. We've got a peach, and just to the north of the peach is a pawpaw. And I'm really glad I planted this pawpaw because they take about eight, nine years to start bearing. And this peach is already showing leaf curl and some other issues. It's just not the happiest thing. And that's what you get when you get the fancy cultivar grafted stuff. You don't always get a ton of strength. And so most likely, if I did a follow-up video in five, ten years, you'd be looking at a pawpaw, pollinating a pawpaw, with an apple leaning to the south and a persimmon squirting off to the north and west, and everybody getting along. So that's just the first uh, example. Here at Edible Acres, we've got obscene amounts. It's probably one of my favorite things to be working on are experimenting with really rich, deep, complex polycultures of perennial plants. So we'll leave these. It's our chestnut polyculture, our American persimmon, Siberian apricot, northern hardy pecan, thornless blackberry, groundnut, lemon balm, nettle, anise hyssop, potato onion polyculture. <laughs> we'll come back to that one. But you get the idea. It's a lot of fun, and if there's interest, I'd love to share more. So let us know if you want to see more of these. Thanks so much for watching.